May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The word of the Lord. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh, we love to sing Christmas carols, don't we? In fact, every year there's pressure put on Jim and me to rush Advent away, to shortchange the anticipation, to cut short the waiting and the wonder, and to go ahead and sing Christmas carols early. But this one, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, is that rare song that we call a Christmas carol, but which really belongs to Advent. And it's a song that is rich in heritage, history, prophecy, and wonder. It's a hauntingly beautiful, simple, and plaintive tune. The music itself seeming to express the longing in our hearts for a Savior. And then the refrain suddenly bursts forth with joy and anticipation of what God is doing in Jesus. The hymn first appears in English in the 1850s in a hymnal published by John Mason Neal, but the core of it goes back much further than that. The hymn is based on something called the O Antiphons, and they seem to go back as far as anyone in the church can trace. The O Antiphons were a series of antiphons that were used in daily vespers or evening worship during the last seven days of Advent from December 20, 17th through December 27th. Let's try that again. I can't speak. From December 17th to December 23rd. Each one begins with O and then addresses Jesus with a unique title which comes from the prophecies of Isaiah. I'm going to invite you now to get out your hymnal that should be in your pews and turn to hymn 257. I'll give you a moment to do that. And by the way, when we're finished with this part, don't put it away yet. <laughs> but there at the bottom of hymn 257, you can see some of this explained and outlined on the bottom of the page. There you'll see Jesus called Wisdom, Lord of Might, Branch of Jesse, and so on. It would be even better if we all knew Latin. In Latin, the word wisdom would be sapientia, and there are likewise Latin words for each of the seven titles of Jesus given here. You'll actually see that on the cover of your bulletin. But what's really interesting is that the antiphons have been so arranged so that if you take the first letter of each title and go from the last to the first, get that, that's kind of confusing, <coughs> but if you do that, you end up with two Latin words, aero cross, which means I will be there tomorrow or tomorrow I come. <coughs> Excuse me. So even the structure of the antiphons 
speaks of our expectation and eager longing for Christ to come. During this Advent season, we're going to look at this hymn and the titles for Jesus and what they say about the Savior who comes. Tonight, we're going to look at verse 1, and I invite us to sing it together. Jim, would you play that for us? If you'll notice that in our hymnal, this is the first and last verse because it speaks so deeply to the longings of our hearts. O come, O come, we say with deep and heartfelt emotion. We are God's people longing to be set free. So much in our world holds us captive. Sin, evil, illness, worry despair, hopelessness, violence, oppression, and more. And we have found that we can do nothing to free ourselves. We mourn our condition. We are lost, bereft. We need a Savior. O come, O come, we pray. And what we pray for is what we most desperately need, Emmanuel, God with us. In Isaiah 7, we read a prophecy. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Rejoice. God is with us. It's the answer to our hopes, the assurance and certainty we long for. In the face of all we face every day, God is with us. God understands and God will save. A child once looked at a picture of his father who was away on a business trip and said, I wish daddy would step out of that picture and be here with me. That's just what God has done. The light shines in the darkness.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Amen. 